Knicks looking to get their offense back on track. And they did for at least the first half. Knicks were moving the ball. They were moving themselves. Now third quarter. Thought it was the third quarter. Dude, man. Pacers came out with a 10-0 run. We go into the fourth quarter. Down five. But the second unit once again would come up big in the clutch. Led by IQ. Derek Rose. My guy Alec Burks. Taj Gibson. And Broadway Barrett hit a couple clutch buckets in the end. 92 to 84. Knicks come up with a come from behind victory at home. Coming into this game, I posted a stat. There was a stat going around um, Twitter that was that stated the um, the top isolation scores, the most efficient isolation scores in the league. I think a minimum 100 possessions or something like that. And IQ was number one. And you you saw him over the last few games. Whether you look at it from the numbers perspective or just from the eye test, you saw him getting his groove back. You know, we starting to hit some big shots. Uh, some clutch shots, some shots that really, you know, can change the game for you. You saw his energy on both ends of the floor, and I thought that's what IQ brought tonight. He brought energy, and he was shooting 46% from three over the last five games tonight, four mm. or four from downtown, but it wasn't just that. He came up with three big rebounds in the fourth quarter, two on the offensive glass, four rebounds on, on a hole. You saw the alley-oop from Rose to Obi that's rocked the garden. It was quickly that <laughs> set that back screen. To free Obi up caused a little con con uh, confusion between Sabonis and uh, and I forgot the 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 wing defender or the guard defender, but That's give credit, man. man. IQ was huge for us in the clutch tonight. You saw some good ball movement. You saw the sets. Stephen Bondi of the Daily News wrote how Tom D Tom Thibodeau said he wanted to get this team a little bit more in rhythm and decided to drop some plays, some sets that they could use early on. You saw that was working in the first half, even though there were some moments where it was a mix of like good defense and just some tough shot selection from both teams. But once the third quarter came around, it, they looked sluggish again, and you just knew we had to rely on the second unit to come back in and take this game over, which they did. And then leading into the fourth quarter, I think once we heard that Mitch, it was around that time where we heard Mitch was out. And I really, I, what I really liked about this is that Tibbs decided to try the small ball unit for a little bit. Didn't really work too well. Instead, he goes with Taj, brings in RJ as well. And I liked, I liked how they ended with Derrick Rose, Taj, Julius, RJ, all those guys, because I think that was the mix that we needed. It was bringing your two guys in who you want to close with, who can give you some good defense, and who want to close games at the end, who want to be the guys. But at the same time, you kept in some of the key bench components too, guys who were going to play their butts off and just keep you in this game, especially Emmanuel Quickly, who was shooting really well tonight. Derek Rose, who was on a tear. Those are the guys that you needed to close this game, and I think it was just a good balance towards the end. So kudos to Tibbs for coming out with that lineup. Yeah, I mean, look, the bench gave us more than just a little bit of a spark. 44 points from them tonight versus 13 from the Pacers. That is a huge difference maker. I mean, this is something that we have been alluding to is – you know, take advantage of the bench. We have a sensational bench. They play well together. The chemistry is there. The camaraderie is there. The floor just looks better when they're out there. And Tibbs, you know, took notice of that tonight. And he made the proper adjustments. It's just there was so many different things clicking. And I think that's because he wasn't stubborn with, with trying to make the same rotations work. You know, the spacing looked better. The chemistry looked better. The ball movement looked better, especially down the stretch. I mean, it just, it was flowing and it was clicking. Emmanuel quickly could not be stopped. He is so damn special. RJ Barrett had some clutch moments. It's about seeing what's happening on the floor in real time and making the adjustments. Every coach goes into a game with a plan. That make, That's what makes you a good coach. That's what makes you a coach in general, right? But the difference between a good coach and a great coach is someone who can say, okay, this was my plan. Scrap it. It's not going to work. And that's what Tibbs did tonight. And that's what he needs to do moving I forward. Just wanted Tom Thibodeau to just understand to, that we can use the depth. It doesn't have to be this platoon of five and yeah. this platoon of five. Use what we have, inter, intermingle, intermingle some of the players from the bench along with the starters, and he did that tonight, and it worked out perfectly. Derrick Rose got, got to stay down there. I may have quickly stayed down there. Quit, uh, your boy Burks stayed in because he was playing Burks. some gritty defense tonight. about my guy tonight. Burks' defense Burks was at on. the point Defensively, of attack. Facts. Yeah. So it, it, that that was just my big key. You know, I, I loved this, yeah. loved how Tom Thibodeau 
uh, you know, sucked it up and he changed. He made some adjustments. I don't know. You can make the argument that it had to do because Mitch Robinson wasn't in whatever the case may have yeah. been. He did what we've been asking for him to do, make those adjustments and trust the guys that you have, trust the depth that we have. And it was just really yeah. great to see. And, and like you mentioned, it all starts with a man quickly. quickly and he's turning bro. around beautifully. Very yeah. beginning of the game, you saw a concerted effort to really get the ball moving, really get us into a rhythm. They, they picked up the pace. They played at a faster pace. Uh, you saw the two-man game between Randall and Fournier really trying to get going. They were passing the ball, making more than one pass around the perimeter before somebody went for a shot. And then mm -hmm. in the third quarter, it's like things slowed down. They, they were settling for, for jumpers, you know, one-pass shots. Randall turning the ball over. Uh, 84 points, Alex, as Ashley said. I thought the defense was on point. The three-point mm -hmm. defense in particular – was great. Uh, wasn't so great on Brogdon, which, you know, as good as Kemba was, they were definitely hunting him in that in that third quarter. And then my guy Burks came to, to the rescue and slow him down. You know what I'm saying? Um, the big man uh, health, Alex. Uh, again, you know, big question yeah. mark, bro. We, we come in, Nerland's Noel once again gone. We lose Block Ness, who had it. You know, I thought Mitch brought a lot of good energy in the first half. I thought he was part mm -hmm. of that defensive effort. We lose him to the ankle. Give credit, my guy, Todd Gibson. Veteran presence. Played excellent defense on Sabonis all night. And uh, closed the door for us, man. Every part of, of, of a contributor on that bench as, as the other guys. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm, th I'm thrilled we pulled out the win. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about RJ, even though he had some big shots in the, four in the second half and in the fourth quarter to seal the game. You know, this is like four or five games now of him struggling with his shot. Um, so I, I'm, I, you know, I want to want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but he's in, he's in a bad, he's, he's losing his confidence a little bit. Um, obviously, it ended well tonight. And then my guy Fournier really needs to pick up his play, man. Um, the first five six games of the season, he was really shooting the ball great. He was playing aggressively. He was confident, and he sort of lost that now. He's not even really getting a lot of shots up. Um, he looks a little tentative out there. I mean, I want to trust that he can get it back because he's been a, a pretty good scorer in the league for, for six, seven years now um, in, in Orlando and in Boston. So we really need him because he's really the X factor, and he gives us that, that sort of extra dimension. I hope they're really moving along with the uh, the statue building in front of MSG for Taj because he, he, he deserves it, man. He deserves it. And then my last, my last point is yeah. – um, Amazing, diff, amazing defense by by our guy Alex Burks tonight on Brogdon. Yeah, that was major effort, and we needed and we needed it because the Knicks were a little bit lifeless at that point. I think we were down like twelve or, or even maybe like nine, but we were kind of the game was kind of slipping away, and Burks just put it in that extra gear. He dug in, stepped up, he got into Brogdon, uh, shut it down, and gave us that energy. Todd was the real MVP tonight, man. Big. I know Sabonis ended up with good numbers, but I don't care, man. Todd was defending him like he was stuck to him, man. He's yeah. I just he was defending on the perimeter, and CP your guy Burks the play with like I think yeah. there was about nine minutes in the fourth. We're down three, and he just put the clamps on Brogdon. and I was jumping up and down. They got the bench yeah. hype. And it seems the lit. whole momentum of the game. Whole momentum of the game. The garden was going nuts, and then quickly comes right up. Next play after, hits the three. And the, that was just that changed the whole momentum, man. That was just huge. Quickly, he's just playing great. He's got his jump shot back. He's defending like crazy. That's how we won the night. We back on having heart, you know what I'm saying? And we needed that tonight, you know what I'm saying? That's how we won games last year, playing with heart. It's not about the most talent and all, all that. It's about who got the most heart. Jim Jones said it best. best. Hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. And when you don't got that much talent, you got to play extra hard and do the, um, the little things that the talent players don't want to do, you know what I'm saying? You won't see KD really taking too many ch ch charges. So you got to take charges, Julius Randle. It's a difference. But I like that little hard effort you did diving into the bleachers. I need all that every time, everything on the court when your jumper ain't falling. And I might have to go back to night last year and start re-promoting my man and start talking about them keys again. Yeah, them keys again. I'm going to start talking about them keys again <laughs> because what he's doing right now is making a lot of noise on that court. You know what I'm saying? And, and he brings that energy level all the way up 
That's what we don't have in our first starting line. Nobody got no energy all the way up. We need that. And nobody cutting on our team like Obi cutting. So those two things that we got on the bench with Quickly and Obi, we know they're going to do what they do. Keep doing what we're doing. First game of the three-game home stretch, we get ready to handle our business, you know what I'm saying? Get back aboard. Get back to winning. Get back, you know what I'm saying, being that team, you know what I'm saying, that some of these people want to throw under the bus. You know what I'm saying? When we start winning, no, don't, don't try to unthrow them up under the bus. Throw yourself under the bus. Knicks with a 92 to 84 come from behind, win over the paces. Much needed win, man. Knicks move to uh, eight and eight and five, eight and five, on the, eight and six on the campaign. So much needed win. First of a three game homestand and, and winnable games, winnable games. You know, we got the Magic coming in on Wednesday. We have the Rockets coming in on Saturday. So definitely winnable games before we get into a pretty hectic schedule next week. 